all right uh, so today's lesson will be about a taxation so I pick up some of the principle from special inclusion some of the principle are from general deduction formula and some of the principle I took it from exemption all right so I pick some of the concept which I think uh, some student they're still struggling to understand how does this uh, <coughs> work okay so firstly i will start with the foreign dividends so how does the, the foreign dividends work and how do we exempt this foreign dividends all right firstly you have to to to, to know that uh, if you are talking about a local dividends local dividends are fully exempted it's whether it's a company or it's an individual are fully exempted which means that we can't talk much about the the, the local dividends so let's start with a exemption of foreign dividends so firstly what we have to know is that most foreign dividends are received by individual from foreign companies holding less than 10 percent in the foreign company are taxed at a maximum of effective rate of 20 percent so no deduction are allowed for expenditure to produce a foreign dividend in other words they are saying that if you invest into a foreign company and you incur some of the expense during the process of investing to a foreign company which means that this um, expense that you incur is not going to be allowed as a deduction at all all right so what happen if you invest um, 10 percent or more into in foreign dividends company let's look at the first example then we get the, uh, the answer all right a resident company a all 10 percent of the equity share and voting right in foreign company b then the foreign company b pay a foreign dividends of 100,000 to a resident company a assume that provision to section uh, 10b2 does not apply so how do we treat uh, this transaction remember uh, we are talking about a company né? which is the same principle with the individual so if the company hold 10 percent or more how are we going to treat this uh, transaction let's go to the answer then the foreign dividends of hundred thousand received by resident company a is included in its gross income under para k remember before we go to exemption we must first include that amount all right let's proceed this amount is exempt from normal tax under section 12b so <clears throat> the reason why uh, these foreign dividends are exempted is because uh, the shareholder hold more than 10 percent it must be 10 percent or more all right let's go to example number two which means that if it's less than 10 percent is not going to be fully exempted which means that we must use a our formula of high low to calculate amount of exemption you know that if we are talking about individual we have to use 25 over 45 is a high low formula the person who is paying a high amount is 45 percent the person who is paying a, a lower tax is 25 percent all right then example number two individual a and individual b who are connected person in relation to each other they each hold five percent equity and voting rights in foreign company a foreign company a pay cash foreign dividends of 100,000 assume that provision section B 10b does not apply all right in this case we have an um, individual a and individual B which are connected person each they hold a five percent now the question is how are we going to treat uh, this question all right let's look at our answer then a foreign dividend of 5,000 received by individual A and individual B respectively must be included in their gross income. Yeah, firstly we have to include into gross income before we consider a deduction. 
then the foreign dividends does, <coughs> do not qualify for exemption under section 12b because in determining whether 10 percent requirement participation exemption is met the direct holding to the total equity share and voting rights of the taxpayer concern plus if the taxpayer is a company the direct holding other companies formatting the part of the same group of the company as the taxpayer are taking into account even though individual a and individual b are connected person in relation to each other they are not part of group of the company so in other words they are saying uh, even though these people are a connected person we must treat them uh, separate which means that each hold five percent which is not more than 10% which means that it won't qualify as a what as an exemption all right let's go to um, exemption of a buzzer so what you have to know about exemption of a buzzer you have to understand the qualification level so in South Africa we have a um, national qualification level from number one until number ten so in generally from one to four we are talking about a high school levels so remuneration um, must be six hundred thousand eh? then we are in the table then grade from grade R to grade 12 is twenty thousand if um, the relative of employee doesn't have a disability then if you are talking about a, a family member who have a disability the exemption must be 30000 then let's go to um, high institution from level 5 to level 10 a relative of employee without disability the maximum exemption is 60000 if a, a member of a family have disability the maximum should be a ninety thousand so that's the the, the summary of a uh, exemption limit for for a buzzer so you have to to, to, to to understand and know those amount because in some of the levels uh, that you guys are doing you won't be given this table so let's go to to our example an employer granted a bazaar of 24,000 to each of employees two children for their basic education. So in this case, we assume that um, these children, they are studying um, from grade R to grade 12. Why? Because they didn't uh, specify uh, whether they are studying into a higher institution. So we know that children, they study um at high school so <clears throat> which means that their exemption will be between twenty thousand and thirty thousand so the other question now is do these uh, children have disability no they didn't specify which means that they fall under twenty thousand which means in total um they are granted twenty four thousand times two which is forty eight thousand all right so all right, the employee in annual salary of 390, which is less than 600,000. So if the amount is 600,000 or more, the bazaar exempt will, will be fully taxed because this person is in, in a higher amount. But, but if it's less than that, um, the maximum, uh, the, the amount of 20,000 maximum will be exempted. So, in this case, which means that the amount that is going to be uh, exempted is 40,000, then the amount that will be taxed, it will be only 8,000. Remember, uh, the employer grant 24,000, which means that it's 24,000 times 2. Each, ma each uh, children maximum is 20,000, which means the maximum will be 40,000. Then the other 20,000, will be taxable all right let's go to um, interest, uh, interest exemption so if you are talking about individual interest from south africa source in it by natural person under 65 
of age up to uh, 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 this person must exempt must get exemption up to 23800 per annum if this person is 65 years or less however is if a uh, individual is more than 65 or 65 or more the maximum allowed for exemption is 34500 so let's look at the example mr mcj in 50,000 interest from FNB South African company and 4,000 interest from Ghana Bank. He is 56 years old. How much will be exempted on his taxable income? All right, now firstly we have to look at the age. He is 56 years. If um, you are less than 65 years, which means that the exemption must be maximum of 23,800. So, which means that he won't be able to exempt the whole 50,000 from interest received from South Africa. So, he also received 4,000 interest from Ghana. What happened if you, in, you, you got interest from a foreign company? No exemption will be available in this case. It won't be exempted at all. Alright, uh, let's go to workman compensation. So, what is workman compensation? A workman compensation... Uh, that's the benefit of individual that suffered a work-related injury or illness. If you have received workman compensation over the previous years, you might be wondering whether you owe SARS or not. All right. So uh, for this one, I'm not. Uh, I haven't yet confirmed. But in the previous, the maximum was uh, three hundred thousand, which are exempted. So in other words, uh, SARS said they can't tax you the whole amount because you suffered uh, you suffered injury or illness which means that they allow you to exempt the render thousand so i'm not sure if this amount has changed for for this year's all right then we have a uniform allowance this paid by employer to give employee fund to purchase uniform for purpose so the principle of this one it says the uniform must be clearly distinguishable. In other words, it must be for employees to have, uh, it must be a must for an employee to have this uniform. For example, if you are a security guard, of course you will need a uniform. If you are a nurse, police, of course you will need a uniform to show that uh, you are a police, to show that you are a, you are a nurse. So if you are working uh, something other than uh, a work which uh, they need a uniform uh, it won't be allowed as a as a deduction eh? so they only allow exemption in a uniform which is a is a must all right so a uh, retirement annuity firstly you have to understand what is annuity remember in annuity firstly you purchase an annuity né, from insurance company. So, step one is when you contribute. What happens when you contribute an annuity? Of course, um, SARS will give you some of deduction. So, there are rules that you have to, to, to follow when you deduct uh, this uh, retirement annuity. So, a maximum of 27.5% of your remuneration or taxable income which means that it, you deduct until it reached a, a maximum of 27.5 percent of your taxable income or not more than 350 so in this one we have to calculate the higher of then we pick the the higher one then you compare then you you you, you will you will deduct it as a as a deduction so if you contributed the maximum of 350 in total and 150 went to a pension fund at a work which means that the remaining one of 200,000 it will regarded as a retirement annuity contribution which a uh, SARS will allow you to deduct all right so the step two is when remember when you purchase annuity 
you have a purpose that in the near future you you're gonna get a payout of course maybe after retirement you are going to get what a payout all right so when you get this payout of course SARS will need something however this is not regarded as a gross income but as a special inclusion all right so let's look at the um, example then we have a table then X receive retirement lump sum of 684 from BC pension fund and receive no previous lump sum benefit or several benefit over many years then the accumulated retirement fund which did not previously rank up for deduction or qualify for exemption in X and amounted to, to 50,000 then the question calculate the normal tax payable on this lump sum benefit all right so this person received amount of 682,000 however uh, in the previous years 50,000 was allowed as a <coughs> exemption which means that 50,000 must not constitute 682 we must firstly subtract that amount all right then the uh, answer the, uh, the retirement fund lump sum benefit of which normal tax will be calculated amount to 682 less 50,000 which was previously exempted then we get 682 fall within the taxable income brackets we will firstly have to go back to our taxable income for lump sum then number two between 500 and 700 because the amount is 632 which means that we must get the difference between what he in as a lump sum and 500,000 then we calculate the 18 percent of 132 then we will get the answer all right then other than that we have a um, general deduction in a form of uh, individual so mostly general deduction formula doesn't most of the items doesn't apply as a, a in terms of a individual so for example we have a, a bed debt. so if the individual is not uh, on a trade purpose which means that there is no deduction that will be allowed as a bed debt. then the other example we have uh, the other example for for general deduction um, all right so i think i can uh, i am gonna create the other video which is which is related to um, general deduction in full for for individual so yeah we'll see you to the next video thank you